Good morning, my dearest brothers and sisters in Christ. May the Lord be with you. May your day be wonderfully blessed and may you stay strong in the Lord. I have a little message again today, an encouragement. I think a bit strange as they seem to be, but God is giving us encouragement on a daily basis. He is coming and it is very, very, very soon. I don't know the day. I don't know the hour. I am not a prophet, but I am the old woman that is given dreams and visions. And this is what happened last night. Very, very graphic again. My first dream was of coming, it, it disturbed me. Uh, quite often they do disturb me because my first instinct is, oh, am I bad? Am I wrong? Am I weak? Because I'm always in the dream. But in this sense, I am watching the dream and I am watching me in the dream with other people. It's as if I'm the observer of the dream. It's very hard to explain, but this is how it happens. And there was a young me with my sister, my real sister. She's two years older, so she's the, the big sister. And quite often, sisters are just so close. Sometimes they're apart, but sometimes when they're close, they're super close. And in this dream, my sister was guiding me. We were coming down the side of a very tall wall. On our left, so on our right was the wall, and on our left was a wilderness. And we knew that it went off to a, cl a cliff. And we had to go around the side into the building. Now, my sister and I are shoulder to shoulder walking. And I think we were even our elbows linked. I, I had the feeling we were linked. Yes, we were linked in arm in arm, coming along shoulder to shoulder, arm in arm. And when I turned and looked behind, there was a great crowd of people coming along behind us. And as we're going, I, I'm sort of veering away and my sister's saying, walk straight, Robin, walk straight. And I'm, I am, I am. And she says, no, you're not, you're veering. And I said, no, I'm not. But then as I studied, I saw I was veering and I moved back in towards her. She felt I was pulling her. I felt she was pulling me. But it turned out she was walking against the wall and I was moving slightly away. So I, oh, brought me back to be with her. And then we went around the corner and there in front in a room, the room had no roof, but it was like, it was like one of those maze things you know where you you it's just got these little these walls and open roof and you move a little ball around there are big there are big areas and then little narrow tunnels and all of that sort of thing we were entering into what appeared to be a big tunnel of a maze a, a big room of the maze but sitting in that room were row after row after row of very, very comfortable chairs. Each one of us in the whole group, and there were a lot of people, had this beautiful um, leather chair, great big, with big arm rests and all of that. Big chairs. A, a, it would be a sofa for three people per, and the cushions were very roomy. So when we sat down, 
there was I I was on the first cushion my sister on the second there was someone on the third cushion and then that was the arm then there was another set of three and another set of three and then behind us multiples in this same manner so I was sitting in the front row my sister in the front row and all of these people were sitting behind us and I had a sense that all of these people were our families and I looked and I saw some faces I did not expect and I oh so I got curious I got curious my sister stayed in the seat but I got up and started to look to see who was there and I was surprised to see who was there in those seats many people I did not expect to see so as I was walking around and then I saw in the back my dad he was sitting at the back the oldest it seemed to go back to the oldest and dad was the oldest and yet an uncle of mine that had passed away and a great uncle that had passed away was just in front of dad but he died younger than dad he died in his 80s and dad's 97 now he's had his birthday everyone oh he had a lovely time um, I thank my beautiful sister for giving us a wonderful birthday for him I, I can't tell you how much it meant to us but thank you for all your prayers for him too now here we are we're all in this room everyone's there and I see a neighbor who's not related but he's just on the outside looking in he's he's somebody that I had not wanted to be in company with young a younger man but I had judged him I did not realize God wanted him I have a task myself that I must approach that young man. He's probably in his early 50s by now and I must approach that young man because God wants him called. I'm sure of that. Satan wants him, but God wants him called, given the opportunity to choose. So that's an aside. That was part of it for me a task for me maybe you have somebody too that you thought wasn't but you see them in the periphery and you can realize that God is drawing that person doesn't matter how bad you think they are God sees the heart he sees what they will finally decide if given the chance and you may be asked to give them that chance. God will without you. But if you've been given a task, please be faithful to God. If you have been if someone has been placed on your heart, please be faithful. God will still fulfill his wishes, but he's asked you to do it. Do it. Even though it feels, ooh, I don't want to. Remember Jonah, he, ooh, did not want to go to Nineveh. But God made him go. <laughs> try not to be Jonah and be forced. You know, try to, okay, you said it, let's do it. So pray for me that I actually go through with that, please. Now, so there we are. We're all in the room. I'm looking around. I'm being curious. Then I see a corridor and I think, oh, what's out there? So I just wandered out into the corridor. And there were two beings there. I call them beings because they didn't have the, the, the feeling of being humans, but they looked human. They appeared to be organizing the situation or overseeing the situation. And as I walked past them, I was curious but they looked disappointed and as if, don't do that. 
but they didn't say anything, you see. And I continued on, and I saw someone went rushing past me, and they were violent, and they went rushing past me, and I thought, oh my goodness. And there I saw leaning up against the wall of the room that we were in, on the outer wall of that room, I saw push bikes. And the push bikes had, and I was conscious of saying to myself, oh my goodness, they've got chainsaws on the bikes. And I thought, that's very strange. And then I saw a group more people coming and the, the corridor seemed to be dimming in light. And I thought, that's strange. So I thought, I'd better get back to my seat. And, and I went round, I turned the corner and the room had darkened. And I thought it was like a picture theatre as in a sense. And I moved forward to my front seat where I knew I sat and I sat down in my seat, it was empty, and I put my hand across to my sister and I screamed in terror because when I put my hand down there was nothing there but clothing. The light had gone because they had all gone. All of the seats were empty. I had missed the rapture. It was so quick. When it came, it was quick. He said, I come quickly. It was really quickly. One minute everything was there, the next minute it was gone. I'm not saying that's how that we're going to be herded into this, but it was a, an essence that this is how quick it will be. And if for a moment you wander off from your, if you let your mind stray from the coming, if you step out of your faith for that moment, if it is that moment you stepped out, you will be left. When Jesus said, watch always, be ready always, he meant watch always, be ready always, because if you're not watching, he will come as a thief in the night. And what you treasure will be gone. You won't be gone. Your blessed hope will be gone at that point. Then your only hope is to be one of those that are left and get through. And what's coming is shocking. It is shocking. So don't let anyone tell you that you can drift off and, and get back in the world for a bit. Don't, don't start getting curious. Yes, you know things are happening in the world. But don't, don't make yourself take your thoughts off Jesus. Don't go worrying about what's going to happen in the world. Yes, acquaint yourself. Yes, see the signs. But don't fixate on that at the expense of following the path to Jesus. Don't step off the straight path for a moment because that could be the very moment. Don't lose your focus on the Lord. This is what I'm saying. I know it took me a long time to say it, but that's what I'm telling you. Don't lose focus on the Lord because that's what Satan wants to do. He wants to pull you away from that. He'll put things in your path. He'll put people in your path. He'll put curious incidences in your path. He'll put computers in your path. He'll put all sorts of things in your path. Don't let them take the focus off Jesus because he is your path. He is the way, the truth and the life. You've got to go that way. So that was the first dream. Now the second dream, again it was about prepare, preparation. This one was a little bit, um, oh, I don't know how to describe this one. 
again we were in a very large room in this room I was full of um, cheerfulness that I had everything under control I think when I say I I'm, I'm talking about believers <laughs> um, because again young woman I'm not young but there I was, and I'm not so organised anymore. Used to be OCD, my sister would call me in the old days. Now I'm not. Believe me, I'm not. But there are all... I had this one huge room, and I'm talking about... Um, it was probably a room about... It almost seemed to have no end, but it was probably about 50 feet by 50 feet don't I'm sorry you um, people that do the decimal measurements I'm sorry my mind doesn't work in that but about 50 foot by 50 foot at the minimum it could almost be a hundred foot by a hundred foot it was just so huge and in this room were segment wall segments on one wall it was all sewing equipment on another wall. It was all um, supplies. And there was lighting equipment. But the strange thing was, a young woman was come. There was also a staging area and a big theatre, all in this one room. It, it was very malleable. <laughs> It seemed to morph into different things at different moments. We were on stage on one side of the room and the sewing section was down to the right of me. And on stage, a young woman came up with a very, very beautiful gown on. Absolutely stunning gown. And I knew she was a righteous young woman. And she came up onto the stage and when she got up onto the stage, some violent people said, oh no, we're not ready for you yet. We're not ready for you. And started to push her off the stage. And the lower part of her dress tore off. So she only had the bodice area on and she had lost the, the dress part, the, the skirt part. It had torn off and she was, horrified as you would be and when she she got she grabs the dress and she's trying to cover herself up but she had no way of repairing herself so I came and I tried to take her down I had a sewing machine and I'm trying I can't sew my sister's very good at sewing I can't sew I'm terrible at machines and I took her down and I I put the fabric under the machine and all the power went out but the sewing machine we were in darkness and the sewing machine is now just going in the one spot over and over and over again and I couldn't stop it nothing I did I pulled the plug I did tried to get the fabric out I could not get the fabric out then the the lights flicked on for a moment and I was a when the light went on I was able to stop the machine and get the dress out quickly then the lights went out again and I'm, how can we fix this for the young girl we have no light and I went and I got bits of fabric bits of elastic for some reason and I started to gather things together to put this dress back together again and as I did suddenly not the lights of the normal room that I had suddenly there manifested these huge big strong spotlight type of lights that you'd see at a at a sporting outdoor sporting event these came into the room just appeared and bang the light came on and it shone so brightly and we were able to fix the dress and the young girl was clothed again. That was just God helping. Even when I saw this this way, just as I'm speaking, God 
knows we are going to go through difficulties preparing. He knows things are going to come against us. He knows some things will be out of our control. But his light will shine at the right moment. His light will help us. His light is there for us. God will come when he's needed. He's always there. But when we realize we can't do it, he comes and does it. He waits sometimes for us to realize we haven't got any power in ourselves. He waits until we say, I can't do this. Help me, please. And the moment you say that, he turns on the light. He comes in the fullness and he rescues you. I don't know what's, what's going to be that issue that you are going to feel so overwhelmed that you just don't think you're going to make it. And he is going to come and shine his light on you and you are going to be saved. This is how beautiful our God is. You need not worry. He's coming and he will make it right. No matter how things have come against you. You are his and he will not let you stay in darkness. You have to physically go away from him. Even if you find you're left behind, he's still going to be with you through it there are millions and millions that will be saved through but the bride being attacked and in the way that she was see the first one I walked away I was curious about the world and I walked away the thief in the night came the second one, the young girl was virtuous, but circumstances tore her dress. Not her, but God repaired it. She didn't walk away, she was there ready, and she was being pushed by evil away. She was still righteous, but they tried to destroy her. God saved the day. She was ready in the end. Now, the third one, I think, was after the rapture. Or on the cusp of the rapture. I'm not too sure. This one was... There, the third dream was early this morning this is the one that woke me and oh my heart I felt like I was going to have a heart attack this dream was so disturbing not terrifying but disturbing we were sitting in a house Some, this house was almost glass walls and it was sitting on a pontoon on the water and you could see out and there were other houses, there was a city but they were all, somehow this water was around it all. I don't know if it's this, the anal analogy of the sea, place of many peoples, I don't know, I didn't understand this part of it, just we seemed to be in buildings that were made of glass. So you could see out, but be in. And they had great big open doorways as if almost the size of a garage door. You know those great 
big doorways fully open on either side of the big room that was the house and I was looking up at the sky I could see the sky through the house I was looking up at the sky and as I looked up there were the stars were beautiful they were absolutely beautiful and I thought gee there's a lot more stars than I normally see and I thought isn't that beautiful and then next thing I heard this woof 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 noise it was a great big helicopter and it was coming fast out of the sky it had those lights like a a bay of lights on either side of it machinery and they had multiple lights lots and lots of lights and they were strong lights and we could see this machine coming towards us and it seemed to be shooting at something and I couldn't see what it was shooting at but it was shooting at something and then it came and it just drew straight past our our roof the noise was incredible but then I saw it was as if the constellations of the skies became pictures um, like line drawings but then they all started to move and what they did they moved into the form of vehicles not flying saucers some were flying saucers but some were were squares and all sorts of shapes but they were vehicles and you knew that there were beings inside these vehicles but they were almost invisible and almost um, like a drawing. And they started to move through the sky at incredible pace. And I could hear a voice saying out, the aliens are here, they're here, they're here. They were singing out this, the aliens are here, they're already here. And the whole sky became alive with the movement of these things. And you could see some were definitely small um, flying saucers with a single occupant head up in a dome bit, like a cartoon. And it did, it looked almost like a cartoon, but they moved at incredible speed. And they were so close, it was how could they not hit one another they were moving this way that way and coming down and they were among the buildings now and they went through from one door to the next door right through the buildings and then just in front these smaller vehicles that looked more like a flying saucer but more squarish landed when i say landed they were super fast then stopped and a being started to get out. Several of them were in the room and beings started to get out and coming. And I had a sense of fear, but not terror. And as I looked, I said, this doesn't feel real. This isn't real. They're here, but this isn't real. And what it, what it seemed to be was, what do you call those things? Holograms. It appeared to be holograms, cartoon-like holograms. It wasn't reality, it was cartoon-like holograms. Extremely well done but it wasn't real. They had physical substance of a sense, but they were not solid this way. You could touch, but it wasn't, you could put your hand through and touch at the same time. They were not three-dimensional solid entities. And I did not get the sense that they were actually demonic beings as I originally thought 
the aliens would be. Maybe they, some aliens will be. But this appeared to be a false flag event. I definitely got the feeling that this was man-made to scare people into obedience. The movement of these vehicles was not realistic. At the pace they were moving, at the only a cartoon or a graphic design could do this speed and this manoeuvring one another going all these directions and never colliding. That had to be done in slow motion first to make these movements and then sped up. Because at the manoeuvring of this, it would be impossible for it to be anything but gimmickry. So I do think this is telling us that there is going to be a false flag event. I'm not terribly sure if it's just before or just after the point of um, rapture, but it does appear there will be some false flagging. Don't let anyone be deceived. Yes, the demonic forces are going to come. Yes, they will probably appear as aliens but I do think there is a false flag event that is about to happen that will fool so many that aren't preparing for it so what I what I think this was to tell me to do is to warn you to warn your family that if they are not in the rapture they may witness alien attack number one being a false flag to whip them into line and then maybe after that there will be a real attack I don't know I have the feeling that when those beings come out of the pit of hell they will appear to many as being aliens when the stars are falling they could be alien entity demons and angels fallen angels that part I think will be reality but there is by, by what I saw then there is an essence of artificial, shall we say, scaremongering. So, be alert, be warned. Things are moving very, very fast. Jesus is coming quickly. He is. Don't let anyone steal that from you. Don't let anyone rationalise things out of reality for you. Jesus is coming for his own. If you have already committed to him, stay committed. If you haven't yet, please know of a truth. Jesus did come. God does love us. God loves the world so much he gave his only begotten son that whoever shall believe in him shall be saved don't hesitate he's already paid the price for you he bought you you are bought at a price a very dear price don't run away be with him he died on a cross he was crucified he was beaten he was tortured he died. They speared him to make sure that every drop of blood had left his body. And blood is the life. He's, he gave every drop of blood for you and I. 
he was buried for three days and he rose on the third day. He took back his life. He will give you back your life. He will give you eternity with him if you just trust him. Just be ready that when he comes, don't go back into the world, my loves, please. I know this is a a less um, cheerful message than I often give, but we are at the sticky point again. We have to realise things are coming to a close. You have seen the signs. The world banks are closing in with digital money. You know what that means, don't you? They shall neither buy or sell. They will stop your money. Your money will become programmable. You will never be able to touch your money and save your money. They will have 100% control over what you do, where you spend, what you spend, and if you spend. Basically, they are about to steal your money. And that's happening very soon. I think they're planning it for the end of this year, but I'm not 100% sure that could be a, a decoy, but it's coming soon. They are about to, in fact, I think they have already signed the agreements to give, our governments want to give the United Nations full control over their people. They're signing over their sovereignty to unelected people. This is already happening. They are building the global system now. It's in full mode. All of these organisations that people thought, they're not connected. You know, if you said they were working together, they're not connected. Now suddenly they're all, the puzzle pieces are all coming together. They were connected. They are connected and they shall be bonded And each one of them is taking more of your rights, liberties and freedoms and giving it to one entity. And we know who that entity is. It's coming. You can see it all coming together now. So know this. Be... Be invigorated. Be ready. Be enthused knowing that every word of your Bible is true because you can see it coming true. You know the timing is right. You know the signs are there. And you can see everything he said will happen is happening now. So if all of that is happening now, you have to know that what else he said is about to happen now. It's all true. Get your wedding gown ready. Keep it on. If someone tears it, if Satan comes and tries to tug at it and tear it, if you don't feel you have the strength to do it, call on the name of the Lord, the only name given to man by which he will be saved, will be saved, not can be, will be saved. Jesus is that salvation. His name, Yeshua, means God's salvation. Yah is God. Shua means salvation. God's salvation is Jesus. If you want God's salvation, you call on Jesus. His English name, as opposed to doesn't matter, Yeshua, Jesus. Those that speak Hebrew will call him Yeshua. Those that speak English will call him Jesus. But know who you're calling on. The one that rose from the dead. 
not the fake Jesuses that were just a prophet, not the fake Jesuses that the Muslims have that, I don't know, were a bit strange. The Jesus of the Bible, the one spoken of by the prophets, the one who fulfilled the prophets, that is Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ. He is the one that will come and save you because he has already risen. And in him, if you die with him, you will rise with him. Die to yourself. Die to the flesh that wants to sin. Let the sin fall away from you. Walk in Jesus. He is righteousness. Walk in his righteousness. Repent of your sins. If you're still hanging on to a sin, repent. Look, Take time to look at yourself. Are you walking towards him? Or are you heading off back to the world? Keep your eyes on Jesus. Look up. Your redemption is nigh. It is at the door. That door is about to burst open. Be ready. Look forward to him. Know that he loves you. Know that he did all of that for you. Every one of you is precious. Know your worth. You were so worthy. Sometimes I know we think we're not worthy. And in ourselves, in what we do know, our works are not worthy. But this is the worth you have. Every one of you looking at this video, know in your heart, no matter what is in your past, God will forget it and forgive it if you look at God because you were so worthy, my darlings. You are so worthy that he took all of that punishment that you deserve. He took it and he went on a cross that you deserve to hang on. He died as you deserve because the Wages of sin is death. It is you that deserved it all. But the love of God for you had him do all of that for you. That's how worthy you are. That your God would be crucified and died for you. So let nobody say you are not worthy. Don't let that voice inside you say you're not worthy. If you were so worthy that God would climb on that cross, bleed his last drop of blood for you, you better take up and realise your worth. And if you are worthy, you should follow. I'm sorry, that was more of a preachy thing than I meant to do, but I want you to know you are worthy. So please, go forward. Trust in the Lord. He is your salvation. He is the one that is coming for you. Let no one fool you. Do not be deceived. They will try. They will beat you down. And if you're beaten down and if the world has turned against you, remember, he said, the world hated me first. If you love me, they will hate you. They will try to beat you down. But if you put your trust in him, love, if you put your trust in Jesus, you have the guarantee that your soul is saved. That your home will be with him 
for eternity, forever. So, put on that armour. Keep that dress in place. If it tears, stitch it up quickly. Don't wander off. We are at the pointy time. Wandering off doesn't mean you won't be saved. It means you won't go in the rapture. Many are saved in the great tribulation, but you want to be in the rapture? So keep dressed. Keep the faith. And love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your strength, with everything you have. Love him. And if you love him, you will follow his commandments. Truly I say to you, if you love him, you will follow him. I love you, but God loves you so much more than I ever could imagine love being. I pray that he will bless you, that he will keep you, that he will make his face shine upon you and give you the peace, the peace beyond all understanding, the peace of knowing that you are loved, by the creator of all things, that you, this little tiny being, is loved. Loved enough that he would die for you and want you to be with him forever. Not as a slave, as some religions, but as a companion. Oh, I'll, I'll watch this bit. Para, parable, oh, I can't say. There's a word in the Greek, parable, oh, that means take you for a friend, take you for a companion, which is also the word for rapture, for, um, oh, I forgot my words now. My memory is getting so, the Greek word for um, rapture. I've forgotten it. I'm sorry, darlings. Ah, oh, yes, I have forgotten the word. Oh, I wish I could remember so many things these days. But as such is the mind going. God will come soon. He will rescue even my mind. I love you so much, my darlings. Sorry about that little brain moment. But... I hope to see you very soon. God willing, I will be with you. That I don't stray off. God willing, I will see you on that cloud. But keep strong and know he is with you through it all. Amen. God bless you, my loves.